Hello everyone, I'm Himanshu Vasnani from Department of Mechanical Engineering and I'm here to discuss with you on the subject Non-Destructive Evaluation and Testing, subject for Exami 419, unit number 4 in the series and lecture number 28. Today's topic are Acoustic Emission Testing and Acoustic Emission Sources. So, a learning objective for today are to provide the students with a basic understanding of acoustic emission testing and to know about various acoustic emission sources. And after the lecture, the learning outcome will be the students will have an understanding of acoustic emission testing and students will understand various acoustic emission sources. So, let's start the lecture. So, the introduction to acoustic emission testing. So, acoustic emission refers to the generation of transient elastic waves produced by the sudden redistribution of stress in a material. See, we have studied about various kinds of non-destructive evaluation and testing techniques like visual testing, uh, visual inspection you can say, ultrasonic testing, radiographic testing and uh, most recently we studied about uh, that uh, eddy current testing. So now we are emission testing. Okay. So they say that this acoustic emission it refers to the generation of transient elastic waves produced by a sudden redistribution of stress in a material. Okay. So they say that when a structure okay, is subjected to an external stimulus that is either change in pressure, load or temperature, localized sources trigger the release of energy in the form of stress waves. You say localized sources they trigger the release of energy in the form of stress waves which propagate to the surface and are recorded by sensors. You can see this arrangement on the right hand side. You can say there is an, an acoustic emission wave which is a source from the source and then you have stress or other stimulus that okay. And then you have a sensor which is recording all these acoustic emission waves from the source. And then it is, uh, it is being shown in the acoustic emission detection instrument. Okay. So here you can say that when the structure it is subjected to an external stimulus, either you can say change in pressure or okay, change in pressure or load or temperature, the localized sources is trigger the release of energy in the form of stress waves which propagate to the surface and are recorded by sensors. Okay, so understand the external stimulus that is change in pressure, load or temperature. Now with the right equipment and setup and motions on the order of picometers that is 10, 10 to 12 meters can be identified. The sources of acoustic emission vary from natural events like earthquakes, and rock burst to the initiation on growth of cracks, slips, dislocation movements, melting, twinning, and phase transformation in metals. So you can have this rich variety of detections like the sources of acoustic emissions. They, they vary from natural events like earthquakes and cracks and slips and dislocations and melting, twinning, phase transformation. And if you talk about composites, so matrix cracking or fiber breakage and debonding these contribute to acoustic emissions. Okay, so composites have their another role in this. Acoustic emissions have also been measured and recorded in polymers, wood, and concrete, among other materials. So you can see that these are the various sources where you can have acoustic emissions. Okay, and you can see in, if you come on, if you can talk about composites, then you have this in the matrix cracking or debonding or fiber breakage. And uh, if, if you talk about uh, polymers, wood, and concrete, they also in this also acoustic emissions have been measured and recorded. Okay, so the detection and analysis of acoustic emission signals can supply valuable information regarding the origin and the importance of the discontinuity in a material. See, our basic purpose for doing this uh, NDT technique is to find out uh, a discontinuity. Okay, we are finding the defect or the discontinuity in the materials. 
So here in the acoustic emission testing, we say that detection and analysis of a acoustic emission signals, we can supply valuable information regarding the origin and importance, origin and importance of a discontinuity in a material. Okay. And because of the versatility of acoustic emission testing (AEP), it has many industry applications like assessing structural integrity, detecting flaws, testing for leaks, or monitoring weld quality, and is used extensively as a research tool. So, the various applications that this AEP acoustic emission testing technique has, like it has detecting flaws or testing for leakages or monitoring the weld quality and assessing structural integrity. These applications are there in the industry for AET. Acoustic emissions is unlike most other non-destructive testing techniques in two regards. Okay, the first difference the first difference pertains to the origin of the signal. Okay. Instead of supplying energy to the object under examination, AED acoustic emission test uh, testing simply listens for the energy released by the object. Now this is something really important. Instead of in AET, what happens? Instead of supplying energy to the object under examination, this acoustic emission testing just simply listens for the energy released by the object. Now acoustic emission tests are often performed on structures while in operation as this provides adequate loading for propagating defects and triggering acoustic emissions. Okay, so these are normally performed on structures that are in operation because this provides loading for propagating defects and triggering acoustic emissions. Okay, so one of the most important thing in acoustic emission testing that this it this uh, pertains to the origin of the signal. Like instead of supplying energy to the object and the examination. This technique simply listens for the energy released by the object with the help of sensors. Okay. The second difference is that acoustic emission testing deals with the dynamic process or changes in a material. Okay, this is particularly meaningful because only active features, for example, flag growth, are high. Okay. So the second thing is that it deals with the dynamic processes of changes in a material. Okay, so this this has this is meaningful because only active features particularly meaningful because only active features, for example, track growth are energy. And the ability to disconcern between developing and stagnant defects is significant. However, it is possible for flaws or defects to go undetected altogether if the loading is not high enough. To cause an acoustic event, so we should have we should have checked the load also, because it is possible for flaws to go undetected altogether if the loading if the loading is not high enough to cause an acoustic event. Okay, so furthermore, the acoustic emissions provides an immediate indication relating to the strength or risk of failure of a component, which is a good thing that it is providing you an immediate indication related to the strength or risk of failure of a component. And other advantages of acoustic emission testing include fast and complete volumetric inspection using multiple sensors. You can see the sensor in the diagram also. You know, Okay, from the source, the acoustic waves are coming, the acoustic emission waves are coming, and there's a sensor. So you can say that that the AET include fast and complete volumetric inspection using multiple sensors, permanent centers mounting for process control, permanent sensors mounting for process control, and no need to disassemble and clean a specimen. Okay, this is something really important. That the advantage of AET is include complete uh, fast and complete volumetric uh, inspection using multiple sensors, permanent sensor mounting, and process con for process control, and no need to disassemble and clean a specimen. So the second thing that now we talk about the other thing that 
A systems can only quantitatively gauge how much damage is contained in a structure. You say in order to obtain quantitative results of and overall acceptability of a part, other engineering methods like ultrasonic testing these are necessary. Okay, so you should understand about that that if you want to obtain other things like size or depth or overall acceptability of a part, then you have to refer like other entity methods like ultrasonic testing. You have to go with them. Another, okay, after the ultrasonic testing, we say that another drawback of acoustic emission stems from loud service environment, which contributes extraneous noise to the signal. So, for successful application, signal discrimination and noise reduction are crucial. Okay. Now we we'll talk about AE sources, acoustic emission sources. Now you can say that acoustic emissions they result from the initiation and growth of cracks, okay, slip and dislocation movements, twinning of phase transformations in metals. Okay. In any case, acoustic emissions they originate with stress. Understood? They originate with stress. So when a stress is exerted on a material, a strain is induced in the material as well. Okay, we know this. This is a common, you can say, rule that when you exert a stress on a material, the strain is induced in the material. Also. So depending on the magnitude of the stress, okay, if you talk about the magnitude, depending on the magnitude of the stress and the properties of the material, an object may return to its original dimensions or be permanently deformed under the stress is removed. I repeat, when a stress is exerted on the material, a strain is induced in the material as well. So depending on the magnitude of the stress and the properties of the material, an object may return to its original dimension or be permanently deformed under our, after, after the stress is removed. Okay, if it is permanently deformed after the stress is removed, this is called as plastic deformation. And if the object is obviously returned to its original dimension, this is called as plastic deformation. So they say that these two conditions are known as plastic and plastic deformation, respectively. So the most detectable acoustic emission takes place when a loaded material undergoes plastic deformation or when a material is loaded at or near its yield stress. If you say on the microscopic level, as plastic deformation occurs, the atomic planes slip past each other through the movement of dislocations. To say that as plastic deformation occurs, you can say if you go with the microscope, to say that as the, as the plastic deformation occurs, the atomic planes they slip past one another to the environment of dislocation. So these atomic scale deformations release energy in the form of elastic waves. Okay, they in the form of elastic waves. Which can be thought of naturally uh, generated ultrasound. Okay, traveling through the object. So when a crack exists in a metal, okay, the stress level present in present in front of the crack tip can be several times higher than the stunning area. You say that crack exists in a metal the stress levels present in front of the crack. The stress level that is present in the front of the crack tip can be several times higher than the surrounding area. So therefore acoustic emissions will also be observed when the material ahead of the crack tip undergoes public undergoes plastic deformation. Say that acoustic emission activity will also be observed when the material ahead of the crack tip undergoes plastic deformation. That is, you can see with the micro yielding. So, the two sources of fatigue crack also cause acoustic emissions. They say that the first source is emissive particles. Okay, the first source is emissive particles. That is, non metallic inclusion at the origin of the crack tip. Okay, now since these particles are less ductile than the surrounding metal, they 
tend to break more easily when the metal is strained, resulting in an acoustic emission. To say that, if you talk about the MSA particles, that is non metallic fusion at the origin of the cracker. So, the first source is like this is MSA particles at the origin of the cracker. This, these, these, these particles are less ductile. Okay, these are less ductile than the surrounding material. Okay, they tend to break more easily when the metal is strained, resulting in acoustic. The second source is the uh, propagation of the crack tip that occurs through the movement of dislocation and small cleavage produced by triaxial strength. Okay, so in this way you can say that the crack tip that is occurring uh, through the movement of dislocation and small cleavage that is produced by triaxial axis. So the amount of energy released by an acoustic emission and the Amplitude of the waveform are related to the magnitude and velocity of the source of it. So, the amplitude of emission is proportional to the velocity of the cracker. Okay, we say that the amplitude of the emission it is proportional to the velocity of crack propagation and the amount of surface area. Created. So, we have to be careful with that that if you calculate the emission of the that is the amplitude of the emission. You can say that it is proportional to the velocity of crack propagation and the amount of surface area created. So large, discrete crack jumps will produce larger acoustic emission signals than cracks that propagate slowly over the same distance. Okay. Now, detection and conversion of these elastic waves uh, to electric signals is the basis of acoustic emission testing. Say that what happens? The detection and conversion of these elastic waves to electric signals is the basis of AI test. The importance of these signals yields valuable information like you can say information regarding the origin and importance of a discontinuity in the material. So say that analysis of these signals they yield valuable information like regarding the origin and importance of this computer in the material. So we can say that specialized equipment are necessary to detect the wave energy and dissipate with signals are meaningful. Okay, decipher with signals are meaningful. So you can say that if you have the specialized equipment and so you can detect the wave energy and decipher the signals with the, which signals are meaningful. So activity of A sources in structural loading. Now this is really important. Okay, because now you are going with the structural work. Okay. So you can see in the diagram on the horizontal axis you have load return. Okay. On the vertical axis it is cumulative emission. Okay. Now you can see your arc. Okay. You can see the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So the basis of acoustic emission is to plot your Kaiser effect, DCB effect. Okay. Now, felicity effect, that is the felicity effect, sorry, DEF, and the emission during cold. Okay. So, uh, this is, let's start with this that AE signals generated under uh, different loading patterns can provide valuable information concerning the structural signature okay, of a material. So, they say that AE signals that generate under different loading. Material patterns are provided value information convincing the structural integrity of a material. So, load levels that have been previously exerted on a material do not produce acoustic emission effect. Okay. So, in other words, you can say that discontinuity is created in a material to when the material do not expand or move until the former stress is applied. Now, this is known as Kaiser effect. What is known as Kaiser effect? The discontinuity is created in a material do not end or move until that former stress is exceeded. This is known as Kaiser effect. Now, with this Kaiser effect, this can be this can be seen in the load versus AE. If you talk about AE plot to the right, so as the object is loaded, okay, the acoustic uh, emissions events accumulate 
like segment A B. Okay. So what to do when the load is removed and reapplied segment B C B B C B. The load is removed and reapplied. Uh, caustic emission prevents do not occur again and until the load at point B is exceeded. Okay, when you remove the load, then or reapply like in segment B C D, even uh, caustic emission events do not occur again until the load at point B is exceeded. Now, if you go about activity of caustic emissions sources in structural loading, so in as the load exerted on the material is increased again, that is B D. Okay, so A E is the caustic emissions are generally. Uh, and stop when the load is removed. Okay, so if you generate the load and then you stop the load, it then goes. However, at the you can say point F, the applied load is high enough to cause significant emissions even through a previous maximum load it was not reached. Okay, so in this way they say that the they say that point F, the applied load you can see is very high. Enough to cause significant emissions, even though the previous maximum load that D was not reached. This phenomenon is known as felicity effect. Okay, so we have discussed about two effects. One is the you can say uh, one is the Kaiser effect. Okay, one is the uh, Kaiser effect. You have the Kaiser effect. The second is you have learned about felicity effect. And they say that the applied load is high enough at point F. This way. The fly load is high enough to cause significant emissions. Okay, uh, and even though the previous maximum load, that is capital D, in this, so was not has not was not reached. Okay, so this phenomenon is known as felicity effect. Now this effect can be quantified using the felicity ratio, which is the load where the considerable acoustic emission sources divided by Maximum applied loads. Okay, so we say that this load, this this felicity effect, it can be identified using the felicity ratio, which is the load uh, where the considerable acoustic emission is assumed. Okay, and uh, divided by the maximum applied load. So, knowledge of the Kaiser and felicity effect can be used to determine if major structural changes are there. Okay, we say that these effects, these can be used to determine if major structural defects are present. Okay, so this can be achieved by applying constant loads relative to the design loads exerted on the material and listening to see if emissions continue to occur while the load is held. Okay, you can see in the figure if A E, if A E, you see. Okay, if A signals contribute to be directed towards the holding of these loads, G H. Okay, uh, it is likely that substantial uh, substantial structural defects are present. In addition, a material may contain critical defects in an identified load is reapplied. Uh, sorry, if I they say that the material may contain critical defects if an identical load is Reapplied and A E signal or caustic emission signals continue to be detected. Another guidelines governing caustic emissions is the Dunigan scoreline, which states that if caustic emissions are observed prior to a previous load, okay, if caustic emissions are observed prior to a previous maximum load, some type of new damage must have occurred. Okay, some type of new damage. Must have occurred, like the like tile developing process, like corrosion and hydrogen enrichment, tend tend to render the Kaiser effect. So you can see the graph, same graph on the right hand side. Now the noise is there. Okay, the noise. So let's discuss with the noise. The noise, the sensitivity of an acoustic emission system is often limited by the amount of background noise. Say that the sensitivity of an acoustic emission system is often limited by the amount of background noise. The so noise in acoustic emission testing refer to any undesirable signals. We say that 
this noise in caustic and contesting, for example, to an undesirable signals, and these are detected, okay, by the sensors. Okay, so noise in acoustic emission testing, they, they refer to any undesirable signals detected by the sensors. The example of these signals include frictional sources, for example, loose bolts or movable connectors that shift when exposed to local loads and impact loads like rain, flying objects or wind-driven dust in business. Okay. So here the, the importance of noise is there in the costing emission testing. They say that the sensitivity of an acoustic emission system is often limited by the amount of background noise here. So noise in acoustic emission testing refers to any undesirable results detected by the sensor. Okay. Now these signals, these include fictional sources uh, like loose bolts or movable connectors that shift when exposed to local loads and impact source. Okay. And exposed to wind loads, sorry. And uh, impact sources like rain or flying objects or wind driven just in bridges. Now, sources of noise may also be present in applications where the area being tested may be disturbed by mechanical vibrations like pumps. So, to compensate for the effects of background noise, various procedures can be implemented. Okay, you can have some you can say procedures that will help you to compensate for the effects of background noise. Now, some possible approaches involving fabricating spatial sensors with electronic gates for noise blocking. Okay, they have special sensors which can be used uh, with uh, electronic gates for noise blocking. Taking precautions to place <laughs> sensors as far as away as possible from the noise sources and electronic filtering either using signal arrives uh, time, arrival times or differences in the spectral content of true signals and of true acoustic emission signals and background noise. So see the background noise has its own uh, its importance. Okay. Because you can also use the sensors also for detecting these noise, this background noise. Okay. So you can say that one of the procedures that has been applied to compensate for the effects of background noise that you can see you can have involve uh, a special uh, sensor with electronic gates for noise blocking. Okay. And uh, you can have this precaution to place sense as far as possible from noise sources and electronic filtering. Okay, so pseudo sources. So, in addition to acoustic emission source mechanism described above, oh, like pseudo sources mechanism, produce acoustic emission signals that are directed by acoustic emission equipment. Now, these examples include liquefaction. Liquefaction and solidification, friction in rotating bearings and solid solid phase transformation and leaks, uh, cavitations and the and realignment or growth of magnetic domains. You can see this uh, backhouse effect. I'll I'll show you in this. Then, then about the theory of acoustic waves, like for wave propagation. You see that a primitive wave released at the acoustic emission sources. You can show in, you can see in the figure on the right, this is shown. Okay, you have this time on horizontal axis, and on the vertical axis, you have velocity and stress, and then up on the upper side, you have position and displacement. Okay, so it's there. So they say that uh, the displacement we form is a step like function. Okay, this uh, corresponding to the corresponding to permanent change. Associated with the source process, they say that this displacement waveform is just like uh, this a step-like function corresponding to the permanent change. Okay, corresponding to the permanent change associated with the source process. So here you can see that the discussion about displacement waveform is there, which is acting like a step-like function. Okay, so the analogous velocity and the stress waveform. Are essentially pulse like. Okay. The width and the height of the primitive pulse it depends on the dynamics of the source. So, some sources uh, 
you can say such as uh, microscopic cat jumps or precipitate pictures are usually completed in a fraction of a microsecond or a few microseconds okay which explains why the pulse is short in duration okay so we say that the amplitude and energy of the additive pulse vary or sorry, of the primitive pulse vary over an enormous range from some microscopic dislocations movements to cross to gross flat jump so one thing is very important that the uh, displacement waveform that you get is the the step like function corresponds to the permanent change related to the source process you can see this primitive acoustic emission wave released at the source we say that a primitive wave is essentially a stress pulse that corresponds to a permanent displacement of the ordinary quantity for the ordinate quantity refer to the point uh, in the material okay now waves radiate from the source in all directions okay they usually radiate uh, from the source in all directions often having a strong uh, you can directional field depending on the nature of the source which is shown in the second thing so rapid movement is necessary if the sizable amount of the electric or sorry of the elastic energy liberated during deformation is to appear as an acoustic emission so as these primitive waves travel through the material their form is changed considerably so you can have that this for rapid movement is necessary that a sizable amount of elastic energy liberated during deformation is to appear okay so the elastic wave the sources and elastic wave motion theories are being investigated to determine the complicated relationship between the ae source pulse and the corresponding moment at the detection site okay. now the ultimate goal of studies of the interaction between the elastic waves and material structure is to accurately develop a description for the force event from the output signal at a distance sensor i repeat that you know what this is the ultimate goal the ultimate goal of study of the interaction between elastic waves and material structure is to accurately develop a description of the source event from the output signal of a distance sensor Now you can see there also the angular dependence of acoustic emission radiation from the growing micro crack. Okay, so most of the energy is directed in the 90 and 200 degree direction, perpendicular to the crack surface. Okay. So, however, most materials oriented research, okay, and the NDT inspectors are not concerned with the intricate knowledge of each source type event instead they are primarily interested in broader and statistical you can say aspects of or our acoustic emissions so because of this they prefer to use narrow band that is resonant sensors which get only a small fraction of the broadband of frequency emitted by the acoustic emission these these sensors are capable of measuring Hundreds of signals each second. Okay, hundreds of signals each second. And uh, in contrast to the more expensive high fidelity sensors used in source function. Okay, now signals that is detected by the sensor is a combination of many parts of the waveform initially transmitted, emitted. So the signal you can say detected by this is that is detected by the sensor. Then call it as a combination of many parts of the waveform. Acoustic emissions, the source motion, is completed is completed in a few minutes of a second. Now, as the acoustic emission leaves the source, the waveform travels in a spherically spreading pattern and is reflected off the boundary of the object. over the signals and that are phased with each other as they reach the sensor 
they produce a constructive interference okay which usually results in the highest peak of the waveform being taken okay so we have to understand this also a uh, typical time interval for from when an acoustic emission wave reflects around the test piece like definitely inside the sensor until it delays or ranges from the order of uh, you can say 100 microseconds okay okay so say that until it decays ranges from the order of 100 microseconds in a highly damped non metallic material to tens of milliseconds in a light damped metallic material we say that a typical time interval okay when you talk about acoustic emission is the reflex around the test piece that is definitely can sensor until it decays ranges okay what happens it will it will decays ranges from the uh, order of 100 microseconds in a highly damped non metallic material to tens of milliseconds in a lightly damped metallic material okay so you can see that now attenuation very important topic we have seen that so the intensity of an uh, acoustic emission signal detected by the sensor is considerably you can say lower than the intensity or uh, that would have been observed in the close proximity of the source this is known as attenuation okay so what is attenuation we say that the intensity of the acoustic emission signal is detected by the sensor is considerably lower than the intensity that would have been observed in the close quality. Okay. This is known as this is due to the attenuation. So this is due to the attenuation. So there are three main causes of attenuation that is beginning with geometric spreading. Uh, so as an uh, as an acoustic emission spreads from a source in a plate like it is a material uh, it's like material amplitude decays by 30 percent uh, okay uh, 30 percent every time it doubles the distance from the source so these are you can say some things that we should know that as the acoustic emission spreads from the source in a plate it's light it's amplitude decreases decays it's light sorry it's uh, like material it's amplitude decays by 30 percent every time it doubles its distance from the source now in three dimensional structure the signal decays of the order of 50% and this this can be traced back to the simple conservation of energy. So another cause of attenuation is material damping. What it is, it is material damping as alluded to in the previous slide. So we can say that when an acoustic uh, emission wave passes through a material, its elastic and kinetic energies are absorbed and converted into so the third cause of attenuation is wave scattering. So geometric uh, discontinuities, example like twin boundaries or non-metallic infusions or grain boundaries and structural boundaries, they both reflect some of the wave energy that was initially transmitted. Here are the measurements of the effects of attenuation on an uh, on an acoustic emission signal can be performed with a simple apparatus known as Tusu Nielsen source. Okay, uh, this consists of a mechanical pencil with either 0.3 or 0.5 mm two edge lead that is passed through the cone shaped Teflon shoe designed to place the lead in contact when the surface of a material is at a degree angle. Okay, so here they they do this arrangement with the help of mechanical pencil. Okay, that is either 0.3 or 0.5 mm two edge lead. Okay, so this we will we can say have discussion for the next go with the NCQs first. Okay. Okay, let's discuss with the MCQ. They say that in acoustic emission testing when a stress is exerted on a material, a strain is induced in the material as well. So depending on the magnitude of the stress and the properties of a material, an object may return to its original dimensions or be permanently deformed after the stress is removed. 
these two conditions are known as elastic and plastic deformation. So it is true or false? I think it's true. Macaustic emission testing. Macaustic emission this refers to the generation of a transient elastic wave produced by a sudden redistribution of stress in a material. So what do you say? Is it true or false? I think it's true. It's true. Now in acoustic emission testing, detection and analysis of acoustic emission signals can supply valuable information regarding the origin and the importance of a discontinuity in a material. Okay, so because of the versatility of acoustic emission testing, uh, it has many industrial applications like assessing structural integrity, rating flaws, testing of leak or monitoring weld quality, and is used extensively as a research tool. So you can say that is this true or false? I think it's true. It's true in this case. The versatility of AAT is discussed in this case. It's true. Now, in acoustic emission testing, AE systems can only quantitatively gauge how much damage is contained in a structure. So in order to obtain quantitative results, okay, about size and depth and overall acceptability of a part, other entity method of an ultrasonic testing are necessary. Uh, we have discussed about this ultrasonic testing in which you have sound waves traveling and if any crack is forming that it reflects back from the crack and uh, you can compare the signal form okay that one which has reflected from the base and one which had one wave which had reflected from the crack so in this way you can find out that the crack is there discontinuity is there and so you can say that in acoustic emission systems can only quantitatively gauge how much damage is contained in a structure. So if you want to obtain a quantitative result about size, depth and overall acceptability part, other entity methods like ultrasound testing are necessary. So what do you think? Should be true or false? So I, I think it's true. It's true in this case. Okay. Now in acoustic emission testing, acoustic emissions can result from the initiation Okay, and growth of cracks, slips, and dislocation movements, twinning, or phase transformation in matter. Now we have discussed about this in our previous slides also that this acoustic emission results from the emission of you know, growth of cracks and slips and dislocation. So it's just true in this case, true. I mean, acoustic emission, one of the advantages of AT is the Fast and complete volumetric inspection. What happened? Fast and complete volumetric inspection using multiple sensors, permanent sensors, mounting for process control and no need to disassemble and clean a specimen. What do you think? It's true or false? I think it, it's true. It's, it's normal that you don't clean a specimen for this and you don't need to assemble it. Okay. Okay, you don't need to disassemble some, you don't need to disassemble it also and you need to clean it. So it's just true in this case. Okay. Now in acoustic emission testing, discontinuity is created. Inner material, okay, do not expand or move until that former stress is exceeded. And this phenomenon is known as Kaiser effect. Now uh, discontinuities are like these are defects. These are unwanted things that for which we are doing such kind of uh, non-destructive testing technique and they say that this discontinuity is created in a material they do not expand or move until the former stress is exceeded okay so if you exceed the stress then automatically what happens the expansion of discontinuities okay they, it will expand and this phenomenon is known as Kaiser effect. So I think it's, it's true in this case. Okay. Now, sensitivity of a positive emission system is often limited by the amount of background noise nearby. The noise in acoustic emission testing refers to any 
अनडिजायरेबल सिग्नल्स डिटेक्टेड बाय दी सेंसर्स ओके सो इट्स ट्रू इन दिस केस आई थिंक इट्स ट्रू ए इज द आंसर Acoustic emission testing group deals with the dynamic processes or changes in a material, and this is particularly meaningful because on the active features like crack growth. Okay, so obviously this kind of acoustic emission testing it deals with the dynamic processes, okay, or changes in a material. So we should be knowing that. The answer is true in this case. Okay. Now, acoustic emission testing it simply listens for the energy released by the object. Okay, acoustic emission tests are often performed on structures, often performed on structures while in operation, or as if to avoid adequate loading for propagating effects by triggering acoustic emission. So, in AET, acoustic testing it it it, uh, it is true that it listens for the energy released by the object. Object. Okay, so I think the answer is true in this because we had discussed previously also that this in AET it simply listens for the uh, energy released by the object and in A test these are often performed on structures while in operation. Okay, because it also it is also kind of a dynamic process as this provides adequate loading for propagating defects and triggering acoustic emissions. So it's true in this case. Okay, so we have discussed the around. And MCQs in this, and we have discussed about the introduction of acoustic emission testing and various sources through which this comes. Okay, so these are the references, these references which you can refer and uh, learn more about these uh, this discussion that we did today about acoustic emission testing. See, uh, these NET techniques are very, you can say, very uh, good. To understand, because these these are industry based, these have industrial application. So we should learn uh, these, uh, you can say, techniques in order to uh, in order to uh, make the in order to find out the defects or discontinuities. Okay, without destroying the work. Okay, so these techniques are having their industrial applications. so it is better to refer these books and increase your knowledge in this uh, subject or other in these topics that we are discussing right now okay so uh, hope you all read these books and uh, increase your knowledge okay because knowledge increase is a very good activity thank you all